Hey everybody, I'm Madeline Sklar, host of the Social ROI Chat. We had such a great one today, an awesome topic. I'm here with our special guest. This is Nikki Pasquier. Is that how you say your last name? Pasquier. 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 Yeah. Okay. Pasquier. <laughs> I wasn't sure if Pasquier. I was going to get it right. <laughs> there, oh, that'll be okay. I can. I always love word association. Um. So, and you're with. Uh, virtual virtual show assistant. assistant. Well, that's yeah. how I started off because I started as a virtual PA, I suppose, because I used to be a legal PA, and then Ooh. I quit my job. I walked out. I quit my job. Ooh, and, yeah, exactly. I just packed up and went, literally. And so I thought, well, I can earn a living online by doing virtual typing and stuff. So I started off as a virtual typist. Um, so hence virtual assistant. You know. Um, but then other things happened. I got deep into blogging. I got into social media. I got interested in all sorts of topics. So that's why I've got two sections to my business, the virtual PA stuff and then the niche stuff, which is what I'm really, really interested in. So, yeah, that's how it all that's happened. Awesome. I love it. So I've known you through Twitter for quite yes. a while now, yes. and you've been one of our regulars on the social ROI chat and also my Twitter Smarter chat. Yeah. And I had seen this article you had written about colors and branding with our business. And it was so fascinating. I just knew we had to bring you on to come talk about this. So today's topic uh, was colors and your brand. I just okay. love this. Yeah, I just thought yeah. this was so awesome. Before we dive in, uh, tell us a little bit about this article you wrote. Um, like what inspired you to go, you know, share about colors and branding and psychology behind it? Well, I suppose um, color is very, obviously, it's very visual. And I'm really visual content marketing is one of my niche subjects. And of course, you can't get away from visual um, marketing without bringing color in. And I just got sucked into it. I think I found an infographic on Pinterest. And I started reading it. And then I thought, that's really interesting. Um, and I thought, well, I think I'm going to write an article about this. It's a bit geeky and a bit niche but I'm really interested in it. So I completely ignored what are my audience interested in. I wrote something because I was interested in it. So, but it just happens to be a really fascinating subject. And psychology is, isn't it? What makes people tick? What makes people do the things that they do? And especially when there's color involved and color and psychology, they just go hand in hand together. So I sat down and wrote this article and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and people can go to your website. What is the link to your website if they want to go check that out? Well, how can I share that? It is on my blog. So virtuoso assistant backslash blog, and then you'll find it there. It's probably the fifth article down. Okay. So if they just go over, let me get a link to this in here. So if they just go over to your website, to your blog, yeah. I know that's where I had originally seen it. I was just surfing around and I saw your blog and you had a lot of great articles in there. And, a big uh, splashy sort of colorful photograph, obviously on it. I can share it on, on Twitter if you like, but um, yeah, that's, um, I originally made a video of it and um, then I thought, well, I'm going to recycle that content and make a blog post out of it. So that's what I did. I think that's just awesome. Yeah, we'll definitely have to get that link and share it with everyone because I think it would just be great for everyone to, uh, I'll find it while we're chatting because I'm already on your site and I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking around on here. I'm, I'm very good at multitasking. You probably couldn't even tell. I'm like surfing well, around your site while I'm talking to you. <laughs> I don't know anyway. Where put that link if I found it unless it's in team chat but um I'll share it on Twitter that's what I'll do yeah well you write okay I found it I'll I'll, I'll post it in the comments okay. here but you also have written other articles like you talk about MailChimp and the GDPR because you're over in England and uh <laughs> lots of great information on your site so I definitely recommend people go check out your that blog. was a nightmare but it's there is there is a method in my madness because visual content generally is very powerful if you talk about funnels, top of funnel. So you're grabbing interest online. You're, you're making people sit up and think, that looks really interesting. I'm, I'm going to click on this link and I'm going to read a little bit more. So it's definitely very powerful on social media to make people sit up and take notice and to grab people's attention. 
And then, of course, it also you can generate leads with your visual content. If you add a link to your tweet and you include a visual with your tweet, um, so then you can generate leads. And then, obviously, on from there, you you nurture those leads with email marketing. So it's all very organic, very low cost. And that's what I want to share with small businesses because I started out with nothing. I had no money to spend on ads. Um, and I still don't use ads, actually. Uh, so that's how I generate all my leads and nurture them and, and create sales. It's a whole process. That's awesome. Well, I found the link. Uh, I shared it here in the in the comments here okay. on Facebook. So everyone can go and click on this link and check out the article that uh, was what's behind today's chat. Your article is Color Psychology, How to Successfully Market Your Brand. So that's what inspired us for today's chat. Yeah. So what I want to do for our live stream after chat here is to go back through some of the questions and get your expanded thoughts. You don't have to like read off your answers unless you want to, yep. uh, but it's more of just, you know, your expanded thoughts and insights. That's what makes doing this uh, video sure. after chat so much fun. So uh, let's start with question number one. What should new businesses be aware of when choosing brand colors? Well, of course, that's all about um, <clears throat> doing your research, um, what appeals to your audience, because after all, it is about your audience, you're trying to pull them in so you need to know you need to know your audience really well and like we talked about in a different arts but know your demographics so if you're going to market to a female audience mostly you need to know what makes them tick and what's going to appeal to them so you need to do a little bit of research there research what sort of colors they might like um and funnily enough somebody said a client said to me the other day well you must have all female clients and i thought um well, I do have some male clients, but as it happens, I do have a lot of female clients. And she said, well, of course, you use flowers and you use pink and things like that. And um, so, yeah, I thought, well, yes, that would appeal to females. I hadn't actually thought that that much about it. But yes, of course. So I do have mostly female clients. And that's why, because of my branding. Right. That's important. So if I really wanted to attract more of a male sort of audience, I would completely have to do redo my branding. Right. And, you know, it's interesting, like I, my branding with the blue and the orange came about because I had a graphic designer that I had hired to design, you know, in graphic images for my Twitter smarter chat. And yeah. this was three years ago, I started the Twitter smarter chat. And she said, Hey, you know, I can design some really nice graphics. And she came up with this color palette of this really beautiful blue. And it's, I love blue lovely. It is and lovely. orange. And I would have never in a million years thought to use orange, I would have never suggested it. But when she sent me different styles with the colors, I was immediately drawn to the blue and the orange. And I just tried using it to see what people thought because, you know, I'm just posting these, these images during yeah. the chat. Yeah. So I had a whole bunch of people looking at it and they loved it. It was like overwhelming how much they loved it. So I was like, over time, like within a few months, I'm like, you know, I'm going to change my whole branding around this. So mm -hmm. I think it's so smart. I know during the chat, people were talking about testing, do a lot of A-B testing. Exactly. exactly. I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll be talking about. Yeah. And uh, I ended up, this ended up being, it's so funny, like I wasn't trying to A-B test or anything, but it yeah. kind of just it organically happened. It. Yeah, yeah. it appealed to them because, you know, it should be always be about them, not you. Exactly. And I thought that was just really cool how that all came about. But also you've got the blue going on, which is a trusty color, generally speaking. And then you've got the yes. red and orange, the ready orange, which is a powerful color and it inspires action. Um, and so that probably appealed to the male base. It obviously appealed right. to people who want to have a chat. And that's, you know, that's probably why the psychological messages that were going on there. I, I, I find it so fascinating. It I just love psychology behind it all really of it. is it's it's fantastic i love it. it yeah very cool so let's look at question number two this was an mm -hmm. interesting one 94 percent of the information we receive each day is visual and that yes. is for sure how can a company visually communicate trust in their branding well again you know this blue thing 
if you think about the top brands that use blue is yeah. PayPal, Barclays Bank, um, Facebook, Twitter, Absolutely. LinkedIn, a lot of the social media, because they have to instill um, a sense of trust in their audience. Um, a lot of, and also in the UK, we have a chemist, a large um, chain of chemists called Boots Chemist, and they have blue. So of course, healthcare, you need to instill trust to sort of market their products. So blue is a very, very important color for those kinds of brands. And so you'll, you'll find it everywhere in those kind of businesses. Um, I'm just trying to, I'm going right back into the feed now just to see some fantastic answers because there were some really good ones. There were so many great yeah. answers. We had such a captive audience today. We really did. Sharing so much great information. Um, I, I find it interesting that blue does seem to be a universal color that is widely accepted by both men and women. Yeah. So exactly. it seems like if you're trying to appeal to, to the masses, mm -hmm. blue works out really good. Well, that's what Joe Halleck in the study um, I referred to in a different answer. That's what he discovered in his um, uh, the test that he ran in 2003. Both men and women universally preferred blue by a long chalk. It wasn't by little margin. It was by a long chalk. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Very interesting. That really, that really is. Um, and then that works perfectly moving over to question number three. How do colors influence buyer behavior? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they really do, don't they? Um, yeah. just, let me just find, just bear with me a second while I just find the... Uh, oh, sure. Sure. Okay. While you're looking... Oh, you got it. Yeah, here we go. Yes. I mean, you have the products, so you're selling products, so you might, you might have a shopping bag, which is a particular color, or you might deck out your shop in a particular color, that encourages people to have a look or to make a purchase, but also don't forget call to action buttons. And this is absolutely fascinating as well. It's a tiny, tiny button, but for B2B marketers, it's so, so important to get someone to take action, to click on that button, to download some content, to sign up for a webinar, it's a little tiny button and the color can make so much difference. And there are so, so many articles written about what color should your call to action button be. That and is I fascinating. It so, really is. It really is. And I forget so which what colors. Be, what well, colors should we be using? Well, I would have thought red would not be the color of my choice because red says to me, stop, danger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what Hi. I mean? But red is also a very contrasting color, which will grab attention easily. So that's sure. why you see a lot of red buttons. I would be more inclined to use green. And in fact, I forget which company who did it. They ran an A-B test. It may have been HubSpot. They ran an A-B test to see which color would work better for their call to action button. The only difference being the color and the green button won, hands down. Wow. Yeah. And that's interesting. And I think it's important to, that everybody should A-B test because what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. Exactly. I could go exactly. copy what HubSpot did and go, okay, let me try green. And it doesn't yeah. work, you yeah. know? And it's like, well, okay, it works for them, not for me. Yeah. Let's find the one that works for me. So I think it really shows the importance of doing the A-B right. testing. Yeah. And also it's not just color. It's about standing out. So if you have a white background to um, a you know, if, if, say, for instance, your blog has a lot of white space, I mean, really any color that um, contrasts with a white background is going to work because it's going to really pop out from the page. Right. And, and of course, call to action buttons, you can include them in, in email marketing as well. That's another place to add them. So, um, and I don't know about you, but I saw a lot of different call to action buttons last Black Friday. And I was quite surprised, actually, because there seemed to be a trend towards... Um, very neutral buttons. So you have a black outline for the button and then yeah. white space and then black text. And that to me just doesn't stand out. Mm -mm. So it's quite interesting. I saw a lot of it. So there was obviously a trend last year towards that sort of thing, but for me, it didn't work. Yeah. And it's important to find what works because that's the difference between bringing in the sales and not bringing in the sales. Exactly. So yeah, really important yeah. To, to test that. Um, Question number four, I love this question because it was very interesting. What role does gender play in color oh, psychology? I knew this was going to be controversial. When I said blue for boys, pink for girls. And, Everybody and was like up in arms. Oh, no, you should be doing that. But it's, 
I mean, it's there in the study Joe Halleck did. Um, that was the result that generally, and I'm talking generally, sure. if you have a look at brands, I think in my blog I used, for instance, um, Aston Martin. If you look at their ads, they're very black and white, neutral palettes. Um, and of course they align themselves with James Bond. So yeah, you have a look at their ads and you'll see because they're marketing mainly to a male audience and Harley Davidson as well. Harley Davidson, they have very sort of um, monochrome palettes. And then I can contrast that with my favorite um, French patisserie, La Dure, and they have the most beautiful palette um, of colors, pastel colors, uh, because they're mostly appealing to a female audience. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. And you, when you had uh, tweeted that you during the chat, you showed two images, you know, one for men, one for women, and you were showing that preferred color palettes for females was the pastels, and then for men, the primary colors and the monochrome. So it's really interesting that, you know, with especially these studies like with Joe Halleck, I definitely want to go and, and get a copy of that and read through it. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure yeah. it is. I mean, can you imagine a Harley Davidson being spray painted pink? Is that really going to appeal to the male audience? No, I'm mm. sure it probably wouldn't. And would they would they sell many? No, probably not. <laughs> That's right. That would be like a custom made, you know, Harley for a very specific person for sure. Yeah. Um, Question number uh, five, what process should business owners use when choosing colors that best reflect their brand personality? Well, of course, you've got to know your audience, haven't you? You've got to know who you're marketing to. And for me, Google Analytics gives you all that information and more. So if you dip into your analytics and see who you're marketing to, who is um, checking out your website, who is engaging with you, on your website and, and various other platforms, you can you can tell, and also the age. So certain things is, are going to appeal to a certain age group. Right. Um, so that's all important stuff that you need to take into consideration. I mean, don't get too obsessed with it, but it's just the general overview is necessary when it comes to marketing uh, and particularly color. Exactly. I yeah, that for sure. Um, okay. Question number six. We're zipping through these pretty quick. I know it's super late over there where you're at, so I appreciate you like sticking My through with this. Run out of battery as well, so I'm just quickly. Uh oh, <laughs> we're almost done. We're on the tail end. Um, question number six. What tools would you recommend for matching colors with your brand personality? These these were. I couldn't, I could only mention one on Twitter because they, they were the only ones to have the Twitter handle. But these particular, these two tools were completely free. I don't know how I discovered them. I was diving down rabbit holes, I think. But they are so, so good. I particularly like the word association and color. Um, you know, uh, professional, the word professional, most people associated blue with professional again. And that was yeah. a completely independent study. Um, I think the other word I used was dynamic, and I think red came out top. So it's just so fascinating to dive in and see what people associate with what word and what colors and, and so forth. And it's all on my blog as well. So I've got other little tools there which you can use. Perfect. To help Perfect. You. Yeah, because that, that is super interesting. And uh, so I definitely recommend everybody, the link is here. Um, you can go and check it out. I've got it right here in the comments. Click on that. You can get lots more information. So the final question, what colors would you recommend for marketing a new brand and why? Well, I mean, we, we talked about this, didn't we? And I, I was scratching my head and I was thinking, well, there is no, I wouldn't recommend a color unless very very generally you were selling finances or healthcare products in which case you might sort of think about using blue or if you say um create um skincare organic skincare you might want to think about using green because green is a natural color it's very calming um and it's associated with nature i mean those general ideas but Really, it's it really depends on you and who you are and what reflects your brand personality. There's no point in trying to be somebody else because it just won't work. You are completely unique, so you have to think about what suits you and also what reflects your brand. 
Exactly. I, I love the answer you had tweeted when you were saying all of that, that, you know, recommending staying true to yourself and your own personality and your brand style. I love that. And researching your audience, you know, knowing who your audience is and what appeals to them. And, and I love this. You said, get ideas from influencers, but don't try and copy them. You are unique. I love that. Because um, we can always go and see what other people are doing. Definitely can oh, give us ideas. Well, you can, yeah. you can be inspired. I mean, the person who inspired me most was um, Donna Moritz from Socially Sorted. Yes. I mean, she was the one who got me into visual content in the first place. She so inspired me, but I never set out to copy her. But she inspired me to do it, and I kind of got some a few ideas. But then I made them my own. So yeah, get get be inspired, but don't copy. Exactly, I love it. This has been so great, Nikki. I am so glad you came on the chat today and much. and and the live stream as well, and sharing your insights. It's a fascinating topic. Uh, for those yes, that are yeah. watching, if you are not on the chat, I recommend you go to the hashtag social ROI and zip through it and see all the, I mean, that, what a, it was one huge conversation with everybody. It really was. It was, it really, it was, was crazy. really, really good. Yeah. We will Great have, fun. yeah, we're going to have some recaps. I'm going to put together, we always do a Twitter moments recap. So it's like an abbreviated version of the chat where uh, it will yeah, be up really later. Good. Yeah, it'll be up later this evening, US time for you guys over there in Europe. Uh, by tomorrow morning, you'll see it. Oh and it's, it's kind of like the best of. It will have all the questions we asked you, all of your answers. Plus, we pick about three answers from the participants with each question. So it makes for a nice, easy, quick read of the entire chat. So that will be up later today on my Twitter, uh, through my Twitter moments. And then we'll have a much bigger recap through Manage Flitter's blog. And that will be later this week. So it's been so interesting. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Nikki. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thanks, so everyone, for watching. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Thanks, we'll everybody. see you next week with another great chat. Cheers. Bye.